Welcome back, y'all. So we're headed out to our local lake this afternoon to do some fishing. I've also got a new bait tank that we're gonna be trying out. So we'll see you guys on the water. All right, y'all, so it's a beautiful evening out here on the lake, and I'm excited because not only are we gonna be catching some blue cats tonight, hopefully, we're also gonna be trying out this new bait tank I got, and it's actually not new, but it was actually given to me by someone, and it kind of means something. I'll explain that a little bit later on, but uh, it's a 50-gallon uh, super bait tank. I've done a couple things since it was given to me. I put a Danco Venturi on it, and I also put a new light in it because the light that was in it didn't really work that good. So, so we're going to fill this thing up with water and I'll show you guys uh, what we do to prep our bait tank to get ready for some shad. Uh, keeping shad alive is actually pretty easy, but there's a few things that you kind of have to do in order to keep them alive. But if you do those two or three things, it's pretty simple. One of the most important parts of keeping shad alive is adding rock salt to your tank. This is water softener salt is what this is. This is a 50 gallon tank, so I'm gonna add around five cups. It doesn't have to be exact, but for every 10 gallons of water, about a cup of salt seems to be about right. So we're gonna go ahead and add this in our tank. And we're gonna start filling it up. I've got a live well pump on the back of my boat. I just slide this hose over it and flip the switch and we'll be filling it right up. All right, so we've got our water in the tank. We've got our pump running. Uh, looks like the Danco's pumping a lot of air into the water. You can see it right there. You can see the bubbles. It's pumping a lot of oxygen in the water right there, or a lot of air in the water. And the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna add just one bag of ice. The water temperature in this lake is about 85 degrees. So we're gonna get this, we're gonna get this tank down to about 70 degrees. That's our goal. And I actually forgot to bring a thermometer, but uh, we can just fill up it by hand and get it close. So we got a nice round tank, nothing for the shad to hit their nose on. We're gonna, we got our salt in there. We got our ice in there. Uh, our Danco's pumping plenty of oxygen and you're gonna need some kind of filtration system because shad are extremely nasty fish. As soon as you put them in the tank, they start puking and uh, just shedding scales and it makes a mess. So we got three layers of filtration here. We're ready to go catch some shad and uh, they should stay alive all night for us. And I'm throwing a 10 foot net if anybody's curious. This is a 10 foot leaf, leaf fisher brand net, one inch match. Sometimes there'll be big ones mixed in with the little ones. I'd say we got something. Oh, we got, we got. He might make it. We'll We'll give him a shot. When you first drop them into that cooler water, it's gonna shock them for a minute, as you can see. You give them 30 seconds or so and they'll go back to normal. 
Now, a lot of people like to put their shad in a separate separate tank and let them purge uh, where they kind of clean themselves out. And they get rid of all the poop and everything that's in them, but I just prefer to go ahead and put my tanks, my shad straight in the tank that I'm gonna be keeping them in. I feel like the less you can touch them and handle them, the best, the better off you are. See that right there? See that little black cloud of them? Throw the net, I bet they just go nuts. Watch them start jumping through the net. <laughs> Seen some big ones in our net, too. That's why I like to use the one-inch mesh, because if we were throwing three-eighths or half-inch mesh, we would have to literally pick each one of those yearling shad out of our net. But with this one inch mesh, they just go right on through. So we got our bait caught and I actually remember to bring a dry shirt with me tonight, which I'm glad of that because I hate being wet out here all night after catching bait. But we got probably 15 to 20 shad. That should be plenty for what we're doing tonight. I've also got some cut skipjack that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna cruise over here and get set up and I'll explain to you guys how we're gonna be fishing. All right, so we're gonna be putting our live baits on just a basic Carolina rig with a slip sinker, swivel, 60 pound mono down to an eight alt circle hook. And we're using our medium action tangling with catfish rods tonight, the whisker whips. If you're not fishing heavy current, like for instance, fishing a lake like this, these rods are plenty. They have plenty enough backbone to bring in any size fish. And they still make the fish a lot of fun as well. They're feeling so good, I can't even catch one. Look at them, they're, they're in better shape now than they were when, when they were in the lake. Finally got one. And since we're, since we're moving tonight, if we were anchor fishing, I'd be hooking them behind the dorsal fin. But since we're moving, I'm going to be hooking them through the nose. That way they pull straight in the water. Just like that. Put him straight back in the water. And we're going to drop him down about six to eight foot and put our planer board on. If you guys are familiar with people striper fishing in freshwater lakes, you'll see them fish this way a whole lot. It's basically the exact same thing we're doing. We're suspending baits under, under planter boards. The catfish will hit it just like the stripers do. Normally when you think about somebody catfishing, you think about people anchoring a boat up and throwing baits out on the bottom. But uh, in a lake like we're in tonight where there's a thermocline, uh, that's the worst possible thing you could do. You gotta suspend your bait or fish shallow water. So we're suspending baits over anywhere from 20 to 40 foot of water tonight. And uh, we're gonna catch some fish. All right, so you can see three planer boards on that side. Three planer boards on that side. Hopefully you guys can see my rods good on the camera. I got some new lights that I mounted on the console. Hopefully you guys uh, be able to see things a little bit better on camera in the dark. So now it's just a waiting game. Hopefully we don't have to wait too long. So unfortunately the buzz got so bad tonight that we only ended up fishing for about an hour or so. We could barely even see our rods. The bugs were so thick. Uh, we were fighting a fish, landing was choking on a bug. There was bugs all over the camera lens. It was just a mess. So we went ahead and caught it a night early. Before I ended the video though, I wanted to explain to you guys a little bit more about the bait tank that we were using tonight. If you remember, I said there was something special about it. So when I was about eight or nine years old, a family friend took me, my dad and my grandpa striper fishing down on Lake Cumberland. And that was the first time I'd really been fishing in a boat. And it was one of those trips that just stuck with me for the rest of my life. I still remember the ride there that morning. I remember him throwing the net, catching bait at the dock. It was just the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. So it stuck with me forever. 
Unfortunately, he ended up passing away a few years ago, and the other day his wife reached out to me and wanted to know if I'd be interested in his old bait tanks. So we got the 50-gallon tank that you guys seen us using tonight, and I also got a 110-gallon tank, which is way too big to use in my boat, but I think I'm going to put 110-volt pumps in it and set it up to use here at home. So obviously that's something that means a lot to me. I've also got some of his rods, reels, and terminal tackles, so those are all things that are kind of special to me. Something I'll definitely hang on to for the rest of my life. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know we didn't get to do much fishing in this one, but stay tuned. We've got a lot of new videos coming up soon. We're actually getting ready to hit the Ohio River either tomorrow or the next day. So if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe. God bless you all, and we'll see you in the next one.